there are a few different leveling methods. However, for the purpose of this video, we will only describe one, spirit leveling. It is widely used in construction and cartography, but can also be useful from an environmental point of view, for example, to determine the flood risk of an area. In environmental assessment, leveling can be used to describe the topography of an area and its relation with specific biotic and abiotic elements as a species, climatic effects, and soil structure. Three pieces of equipment are required, an automatic level, a tripod, and a measuring staff. To set up a tripod, ensure the legs are loosened and secured into the ground. Then adjust height as needed until the tripod is roughly level to the ground. Then lock the legs in place using the clamps. Then place the automatic level on top of the tripod and screw in to secure. The level has a telescope with an eyepiece. Through the eyepiece are crosshairs which are used to take a reading. There is a focus screw to bring the measuring staff into focus. There are three fine tuning screws to bring the bubble into the circle. Using the fine tuning screws, adjust the level until the bubble in the spirit level is within the circle. An easy way to do this is to adjust two at a time, either both in or both out, to bring the bubble adjacent to the centre of the circle. Then use the third to bring the bubble into the circle. The measuring staff can be extended as necessary to an appropriate height up to 5 metres. It is a five stage staff, so has five 1 metre sections. The measurement alternates black and red so that the measurer can see how many sections have been extended. It is graduated in an E pattern with 1 centimetre blocks. To take a reading, this would be 0 0.9, here would be 0 0.91, 0 0.92, 0 0.93 and so on. One of the main issues with the method is how the accuracy of the measures can be affected by any interference with the equipment, whether intentional or accidental. For example, if the tripod or auto level were to be shifted even slightly, then the equipment would no longer be level with the ground, and any measurements of the measuring stick would be wrong. To prevent this, try to avoid touching the equipment once it has finished being set up, and make sure to frequently check the spirit level and readjust if necessary. Another source of issue is any movement of the measuring staff while readings are being taken. The person holding the staff must keep it in the same position at all times, or the heights will be inaccurate. There are also problems with the precision of measuring using the auto level, as the accuracy cannot be narrowed down to millimetres, whereas a laser level can measure more quickly, at a greater accuracy and over greater distances. However, this equipment is much more expensive. The dumpy level is less sophisticated, but it has a highly precise spirit level and the benefit of being the cheapest type of level. One of the best kept secrets by the university higher-ups is that unbeknownst to the students and lecturers, the loch is inhabited by ravenous, man-eating piranha. Every summer the loch floods and students in accommodations closer to the loch are placed in grave danger. The university wishes to build flood mitigation infrastructure and has hired our crack team of levelling experts to find the altitude of Beach and Juniper Court, whose residents are at greatest risk of being eaten alive when the inevitable summer flood comes. Armed only with our tripod, measuring staff, auto level, and the knowledge that Stirling Loch lies at an altitude of 31.4 metres, we set about the task. Ellie gingerly places the tip of her measuring staff at the shore of the treacherous loch at our known altitude, or datum, of 31.4 metres above sea level. Looking through the eyepiece, the crosshairs line up with 4.65 metres. This is our first backsight reading. Turning the eyepiece around, Ellie can then move away from the dangerous waters and further up the hill to our first foresight. Upon inspection, the reading of our first foresight is 0 0.5 metres. With Ellie remaining in place, we then carefully dismantle and move the tripod further up the hill, and our first foresight then becomes our second backsight. We then take further readings and repeat this process up to the foot of Beach Court. From Beach, we then work our way to Juniper Court, taking measurements along the way. As this work is vital to the survival of university students, to make sure we are as accurate as possible, we then work our way back towards the loch, ensuring our starting elevation remains the same. So we take all our readings that we've taken and we place them into a table like this. We then have a look at our backside and foresight readings, and if your backside reading is larger than your next foresight reading, then you place the difference into the rise column. If your foresight reading is larger than your previous backside reading, you place that difference into the fall column. You then add up all the rises and subtract all the falls from your known datum point 
of 31.4 meters to get the total um, change in altitude. If you have a look here, uh, Beach Court was at reading number 6. So to find the final altitude of Beach, we add up the rises that we've taken uh, to the dating point of 31.4 meters, giving us a final reading of 41 meters and 25 centimeters above sea level. Willow, however, carried on down to reading number 10, so we then subtracted the two falls that we've calculated previously to give us a final altitude of 39 meters and 98 centimeters. As the loch regularly floods a minimum of 10 metres during summer, the university definitely have their work cut out for them if they're going to get their flood mitigation infrastructure in place for summer and protect their students from being eaten alive.